is absolutely great. Ladies and gentlemen, he's the Bellator 147 co-main event this Friday on Spike TV. 24-4-1 record. He is the insane one. Georgie K. Georgie, welcome to the show. This is Aaron, Jonathan King, and Adrian Gallegos. How are you doing tonight? Good, man. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Thanks for being on the show. You have a big fight coming up this week. We appreciate your time. Uh, how do you feel getting ready for the fight this week? Oh, I feel great. You know, everything's good. My weight is good. And, um, you know, just can't wait to uh, step inside that cage on uh, Friday night. You have a, you're coming off an injury. Uh, your knee was in bad shape. I know you had surgery. Um, talk about the, the recovery process and uh, the length of time it's been how long it took you to get back on on uh, on the shtick again, and uh, are we going to see anything different, or is it going to be the same old in your face, Georgie Karakanian? that we love? Well, you know, the recovery pro- process uh, was you know very very painful. I'm not going to lie, but uh, it was good. You know, I needed that. It was just a little time off. It was a kind of vacation, but it was like a painful vacation, you could say. But uh, you know, I. It's going to be different, Georgie, for sure, you know. Uh, every time I step in there, I'm, I'm in your face, but, you know, I'm, I'm I'm trying to do different things. I can't just be the same fighter as I was, you know, my last fight because, you know, I'm not evolving. So, you know, I try to do everything different every fight. So, uh, you know, I might say I'm, trying to, I'm going to try and knock you out, but I'm going to go for submission or trying to go for submission and go for knockout. You know, I just, it's going to be a little different and unorthodox. Yeah, speaking of evolving or changing things, I mean, you were training, you know, with a, a guy who develops and is the home, the house of champions. You were training with with uh, Edmund, but you left. Where did you go, and where are you training now? You know, uh, first of all, I, I never actually trained with Edmund. I uh, I trained a few times, but I never actually had a camp with Edmund. You know, GFC always had their doors open for me, but uh, I never actually spent time to train there or work on my camps. But, uh, you know, my, my, my training place was always uh, Melania, and, you know... Batista's I the man. Went... I love those guys there. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I, I had an opportunity to go train with Frankie Edgar because uh, he asked me to go help him for a UI favor fight. So uh, that was an eye-opener. You know, oh, wow. With the former lightweight champion. So, uh, well, how, know, how, it, how was, it was that? Was that was actually good, man. You know, Frankie uh, pushed me a lot, showed me a lot of stuff. And, you know, I actually get to watch, you know, a high-caliber fighter like Frank Edgar, how he trains, and, you know, spent about a week and a half with them there and lived at uh, uh, his parents' house. And, uh, you know, it was just a great experience. Now, I'm wondering how much of this uh, trip to visit Frankie Edgar was you helping him get ready for a camp, and how much of it was you getting his kids ready for soccer? Because I'm always seeing his kids playing soccer on social media, and I know that you were like a freaking professional soccer player, man. So what's going on with that? Any idea that you're going to start going kicking that ball around again? Uh, you know, I never had an opportunity to help playing his kids, but, uh, you know, as far as me playing, hell no. I'm not, I'm not trying to get close to soccer because, <laughs> you know, something, someone kicks me in the leg, but... A fucking ankle or something <laughs> happens, you know. It just I don't want to have. I want to be injury free. You know this 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 knee injury taught me a lot. It, it taught me how to train smarter and you know listen to my body. Because before I would just train crazy three times a day and just not take any days off. So you know, just you gotta listen to your body. Yeah, speaking of uh, being smart, you're fighting a crafty guy. You're fighting a Daniel Watchell. He's thirty five and nine. He's a crafty vet. You know. uh where do you see this guy being dangerous, and how do you want to finish this guy? How do you want to finish this fight? Because you're pretty much in line for a title shot. This is a co-main event. This is a big-name fighter you're against. And, I mean, you're, you're a champion-level fighter. Yeah, you know, I, I don't, to be honest, I don't care who I face. You know, they said uh, my last fight, I was, when I faced Bubba, they're like, oh, uh, I'm going to get taken down, and I'm going to get my ass kicked. And, you know, you saw what happened. And, you know, uh Daniel is just a journeyman, you know. He had a lot of uh, fight. He has a lot of fights under his record. He has a uh, lot of good wins, a lot of good losses, and one of the losses is going to be to me too. So, uh, you know, I I know he has not that many holes in his game, but this is MMA, and uh, I haven't seen him change. He's been fighting the same way the whole Bellator tournament, and you know, even his last fight with Pitbull, he's the same fighter. But 
he might expect to get ready for a you know the same Georgia that fought Bubba that's going to go for game chance. But no, you know, I have uh, I have different submissions under my uh, under my skills, and uh, I can't wait to show it on Friday night. All right, Georgie, I've got to ask you a question. Um, in 2011, you faced Pitbull, and he won by TKO. Well, there was a, something that happened in the back room at Bellator recently, a few months back between you and him, supposedly. I asked him what happened, and I'm going to read you his response, and then I want to get your response to this because he lost the belt, so yeah. I don't know if you even want to fight him still or you want the belt. So let me, let me uh, read this to you. This was his response. I already fought Georgie in 2011. On that occasion, I knocked him out. He was a cool guy. He asked me to train with him after the fight. I accepted because we're professionals in this sport. That's normal. But after Conor McGregor, everyone wants to talk crap. This dude wants to get views talking crap. But with me, that's not how it works. I show who I am inside the cage. He challenged me, talked crap on Twitter, and said he's coming for me. But nothing happened. Then when we were signing posters for Bellator, he walked in and demanded to know why I was looking at him. That's when the conflict started. Everyone saw it. That was translated by Christian Stein. How do you want to? Uh, how do you respond to that? Uh, all right. So let's go back. After uh, he uh, beat me, fair and square. Uh, we we start exchanging. We you know we start talking, and there was a time where he said, "I'm going to be in San Diego. We're going to train," and I was willing to train, you know, but. Uh, the whole, the whole thing with, uh, you know, all I told him on the Twitter, I said, just keep my belt, you know, just take care of my belt, make sure that you don't put no ice, acai stains, you know, Brazilian black meat acai. You know, I don't, I didn't say nothing bad. I just fucking said acai, you know. So, and, uh, you know, he took that offensively. I don't, I'm not trying to be no Conor McGregor, man. Fuck Conor McGregor, you know. I, I have this saying, you know, you come to this sport, you either go through the way or you hit the jackpot. Conor McGregor hit the jackpot, and whatever, it's good for him, fuck him. If I see him on the street, I still bitch slap him. So I hate when people try to compare me to him, you know, saying that, oh, I talk shit because of him. No, fuck him. And uh, in regards to the poster signings, Syed was signing posters, and... Uh, I was, you know, I was trying to keep it professional because it's fight week for Saeed and I don't want to say anything. When we walked in our room, he was just pacing back and forth, just mad dogging me. And, um, you know, I, I kind of looked at him and he just started saying things that I can understand, man. I wish I had, like, you know, I wish I had his home address so I could send him Rosetta Stone so he could learn English. But when, <laughs> when, when, he started, when he started yelling at me, I didn't understand what he was saying, so I thought he was going to fight in there. And I just forced him, and he had his all, all, all his other Brazilian friends behind him, so uh, I thought he was going to be fired, which, you know, honestly, I don't care. I'm, I'm willing to fight anywhere. It's just, uh, I'm a very cool person, but you push the wrong button, I don't care where we're at, you know. Let's do it. So I thought he was going to fight, but he started backing up. You know, he started going back, and then, uh, you know, that's there. You know, he, he just... He's been a bitch, you know, I'm not, I have nothing, you know, he wants to, my, my goal is to the belt, you know, that's my goal, whoever has the belt, that's what I'm chasing. Well, so uh, having had that happen to you, were you surprised at all when you heard that they had jumped, I think, Daniel Strauss a few weeks ago? Yeah, man, that's messed up, you know, you don't do that. Do you think that they, that they, that's the type of stuff that they would do, though, after what happened with you? Oh, I wish they would do that to me. You know, I don't think they would do that to me or Saeed, you know, because they know what's up. You know, I know, I know the Brazilians, they have, I, you know, the, the honest truth is, it's, it's a little man syndrome. He's, he's just little. When he was growing up, you know, he had that syndrome. So I think he just, you know, he, you know, if he tried to touch me, man, I would have fucking fucked him right in the face. And I, I don't, I don't care. Let me ask you, how did you get into fighting? Because you just sound, you know how like a, uh... There's some, there's an intangible about a successful fighter. You have to not be arrogant, but you have to be confident. You have to think and know in your head you can take that guy out. Otherwise, there's no way in hell you can be a winner and be a future champion. So I can sense this about you. I'm curious, how did you get into fighting? Were you raised, like, taking martial arts? Is it something you fell into? What's your story? 
I think growing up as a kid, I was really aggressive, and uh, I was getting a lot of troubles. Uh, when I was playing soccer, I would get a lot of red cards, you know, just to stand a fight with the <laughs> players. But, you know, fighting fighting never played in my mind. You know, I never, the, I'm, you're never going to hear me say, oh, yeah, man, when I was born, you know, I saw myself being a professional fighter. It's just something, you know, I was I was aggressive. I was a little... You know, running around everywhere, just very hyper, and uh, you know, just I, I, I guess you could say I got an accident. You know, a friend of mine was doing jiu-jitsu, and I fell in love with the, you know, jiu-jitsu, the, the art of jiu-jitsu, and uh, and then you know, from there I started fighting. All right, cool. Well, we have just a couple more questions because we know it's fight week, and we don't want to take up too much more of your time. So our uh, John uh, Jonathan King here is going to ask you a question. Then I'm going to ask you a follow up one myself. Where okay. do you, where do you see the the uh, the Bellator division going? The the Bellator system actually, you know, they're partnering up with Ryzen. Um, they're putting on fights like Dada against Kimbo, um, and and they're even doing some um, hybrid cards that are kickboxing. Uh, how do you feel about being on cards that are not pure MMA cards? And before you answer, I'm going to follow up so we'll combine our question into one. I was going to say, we love Bellator, the product, what they do, how exciting it is, how they're willing to take chances and risk and put on fights the fans want to see. Also, sponsorships. Do you feel like you have a better opportunity and can be more successful financially and in every aspect right now in Bellator than any other place? And what do you love about Bellator? Or what do you like about Bellator? Hello? Oh, crap. I think he hung up when I asked him if he about the Bellator thing. Hold on one second. Did he probably just lost him. No, I think we lost him. Yeah. Bad connection. Because it sounded like it was fading out. Okay, we're calling him back up. If He does, he said 10 minutes, so maybe it, the timer at 10 minutes went off when he hung up. We had a 10-minute window. No, I'm just kidding. Hey. All right, sorry about that. We were just finishing up saying um, last few questions here. Uh, what do you like what? about Bellator's product and about what Bellator is doing? Because they're just so not, – they're not afraid to take chances and take risks. They put on fights fans want to see. They allow you to get sponsorships and to make money outside of the cage and inside of the cage. What do you appreciate and like about the Bellator product? Lost him again. Oh, uh, crap. Yeah, I think we lost him. All right, well, I guess we tried our best with Georgie. I still had a lot of fun, and he had some incredible stuff to say. Must La- be in a bad area or something. Ladies and gentlemen, Georgie K. Georgie Karakani, man. And Good thank up. you thank you so much to Bellator for setting that up. I mean, uh, well, the, I'll answer the question for him, I guess. The stuff I love about Bellator is that they make it more fan-friendly. It's on one channel. Fa- the fighters can wear unique, different things. They have their own sponsors. They get to do fun walkouts. They get to yeah. do the entrance. You know, they show you, they let the fighter show personality and be themselves. I think he's uh, calling us back there. <clears throat> All right, let's try it one more time. All right, we'll try it one more time. George, are you there? Yeah, hold, hold on one second. Okay. I think he's trying to switch to the Bluetooth. Are you guys there? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so tell us, what do you like about Bellator and what they uh, allow you to do as a fighter? Yeah, as far as Bellator throwing the, the, the hybrid shows like kickboxing and mixing with MMA and all that stuff, I, I think that's great, you know. It shows that we are different than any other promotion out there and that, you know, you, you don't want to be, you know, the same type of organization. You know, this, this is, I think Bellator is totally different than anyone, you know. And as far as the kickboxing, man, I, I would love to, you know, after this fight, I want to talk to Coker, and hopefully, I I, I want to get on one of those kickboxing cards. And, there you go. You know, just straight kickboxing. Wow, but, some uh, breaking news there, huh? Nice. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, nice. But <laughs> you know, I have a professional boxing fight. You know, I, I already had one, and one I want to know. But you know, I think kickboxing would be way easier than boxing. So uh, I wouldn't mind, um, you know, fighting and kickboxing. But and as far as uh, Bellator, you know, I love Bellator. You know. Uh, I don't want to be making thousand dollars from a Reebok deal like all those UFC guys that are getting screwed. You know, we have the opportunity to all use all this other uh, sponsors, and uh, you know, they all come into Bellator, and uh, I'm just happy. You know, I have a lot way more sponsors, and I'm gonna make probably way more than any you know UFC fighter that's fighting in second or third or fourth fight. All right. Nice. 
Well, Georgie, everyone who wants to check you out and see you fight, put on a great show for us. It can be seen this Friday night, Bellator 147 co-main event on Spike TV. Georgie, please tell us before we let you go, uh, who has been supporting you and making it possible to train and get ready for this fight? Uh, yeah, you know, the major support was from uh, from uh, South Coast uh, Mitsubishi. You know, they supported me a lot. Uh, Hayabusa uh, they supported me a lot. Uh, Garden of Life Nutrition. And uh, who else? Who else? There's a, there's a lot more. Uh, uh, Future Legends, uh, Pain Away, uh, Original Grappler. You know, a lot of those sponsors, you know, stepped up and... Uh, Help me out, and uh, yeah, you know, we actually share a sponsor, Georgie. Yeah, we got some Pain Away right here. Yeah, we, we're also sponsored by Pain Away. <laughs> yeah, you should use them, man. It's, it's the best. I thing. have. Yeah, so that works. works. All right, well, Georgie, don't get it close to your balls. Don't get it close to your <laughs> yeah, balls, especially the heat. Yeah, or touch your eyes. Hey, uh, Georgie. Uh, <laughs> I already have obviously followed your career, but I didn't really know too much about you on a personal level. After this interview, I am now a big fan, and I cannot wait to see your fight. Ladies and gentlemen, check out Georgie, Bellator 147 co-main event this Friday, Spike TV. Thank you so much for the time. Ladies and gentlemen, Georgie K. Thank you, guys. Thanks for being on the show.